What is up guys and welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. My name is Moabi and today I'm going to be going through the Group Policy Management Console. So in this video, I just want us to explore the Group Policy Management Console. To get started, make sure that you are logged in as your domain administrator and make sure you have the Active Directory Domain Services role installed on your server. So once you have these requirements in place, log into your server and then open your server manager. In my case, my server manager is already open. Remember, if your server manager doesn't open or you have closed it, all you have to do is click on your start menu and then click your server manager from your list on your left or from the tile from your right. Click either option and then let's continue. So in your server manager, all you have to do is click on tools and under tools, Let's scroll down to Group Policy Management. Once you locate your Group Policy Management, click on it. This will open up the Group Policy Management console. And in this console, on your far left, you will see Group Policy Management. And under Group Policy Management, you will see Forest with my domain name. And under Forest, you will see Domains, Sites, Group Policy Modeling, and group policy results. For this tutorial, we will be focusing on domains. So double click the domains container or press the expand button next to the domains. Press the expand button again on your domain name. And now you will see default domain policy, domain controllers OU, home admins OU, group policy objects, WMI filters, and starter GPOs. So the default domain policy is a policy that was created for us by default when we were installing our Active Directory Domain Services role. So let's look on the default domain policy. And as soon as we do that, we get a group policy management console pop-up window. And inside this pop-up window, we have a message that says, you have selected a link to a group policy object, except for changes to link properties, changes you make here are global to the GPO and will impact all other locations where this GPO is linked. So this pop-up window just informs us that once we make changes to our default domain policy, these changes will be applied globally. So any object that is assigned to this GPO or under this GPO will be affected by the changes that you make. So click on OK. And now we get different options to select from for our default domain policy. At the top, you will see scope. And in your scope, this is just showing you where this policy will be applied. So our policy will be applied under our domain name. So in my case, my default domain policy will be applied under my tech tips with moabi.com domain. And below, you will see security filtering. So this window allows us to choose the groups and users and also computers that can be affected by the group policy. So for now, there's only authenticated users, and I'm going to leave that as default. You can add groups, users, or computers to the list. So as default, this policy will be applied to all users that are authenticated within our domain. So I'm going to leave it as default, and then let's click on the tab Detail. And under Details, you will see Domain, and with your domain name, the owner, which is the domain admins group from your domain. And below owner, you will see when this default domain policy was created, modified, the user version, the computer version, the unique ID, the GPU status of the group policy, and also comments. So let's click on the settings tab. And once you click the settings tab, you will see an Internet Explorer pop-up window. So in this window, we get a message that informs us that Content within this application coming from the website listed below is being blocked by the Internet Explorer Enhanced Security Configuration. So let's click on the button Close. And this will show us all the settings that have been set for the default domain policy. So if you scroll down, you will see more settings with regards to the default domain policy. And as you scroll down, I want you guys to take note of the computer configuration with the enabled option next to it. So under computer configuration, you will see all the settings that apply to computers. 
And if you scroll down, you will see user configuration enabled. Below user configuration, you will see no settings defined. The reason is this policy hasn't been configured. So let's have a look at the computer configuration for the default domain policy. So under computer configuration, you will see policies, Windows settings, security settings, and now account policy or password policy. Below are all the settings that have been applied that affect our password for our users in our domain. We will talk more about how to change these settings. Below account policies or password policy, you will see account policies or account lockout policy. And just below account policies or account lockout policy, you will see account policies, cables policy. And if you scroll down, you will see local policies or security options. And the last option that has been configured under computer configuration is public key policies or encrypting file system. All these options can be configured or changed to your needs. For now, let's click on the domain controllers organizational unit. And under this OU, you will see a default domain controllers policy. And if you click on the expand button next to the domain controllers OU, this will show you all the GPOs that have been applied under the domain controllers organizational unit. And now let's click on the home admins organizational unit. And in this organizational unit, there are no policies that have been applied. So if I click on the expand button next to the home admins organizational unit, you will see all organizational units that I have created under home admins, which is home groups, home users, and technician. And if I click on each OU, we should be able to see if there are any policies that have been applied to these organizational units. So I'm going to click on home groups, then click on home users, and also technician. And as you can see, there are no group policies that have been created under these organizational units. But all these organizational units will be affected by the default domain policy. Another thing to take note is that any group policy that you create under an organizational unit will only affect that organizational unit. So any group policy that we create under home admins will apply to the home groups organizational unit, home users organizational unit, and technicians organizational unit. And if I create a group policy under home groups, that policy will only affect the home groups organizational unit and any other organizational unit under home groups. So I'm going to click on the expand button. And as you can see, I do not have any organizational unit under home groups. So I will create different examples in our next video where we apply a GPO from a parent organizational unit that will affect all the child organizational units and also create special GPOs for our child organizational units. So for now, let's move on to group policy objects. And if you click on the expand button next to the group policy objects, this will show you all the group policy objects that you have created in your domain. So for now, I only have two group policy objects, which is the default domain controllers policy and also the default domain policy. Any group policy that you create will be saved under group policy objects. And from the group policy objects window, we can create, delete, modify, or link group policy objects to organizational units within our domain. And just below group policy objects, you will see WMI filters and also starter GPOs. We'll talk more about the WMI filters and starter GPOs in the next coming few videos. So with that being said, that concludes our video for today. I just wanted to explore the group policy management console with you guys and show you what we have as default within the group policy management console. We will be using the group policy management console to create, modify, delete, and link GPOs to our users, computers, and groups within our domain. So in the next video, I will be creating a group policy that is going to affect all my domain users on my domain. That is it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Share your comments or suggestions in the comment section below. And don't forget to share the channel with a friend or two. And lastly, click on the subscribe button for more and I will see you guys on the next video. And remember, each one, teach one.